message. But the deal was that we went to England for the first time on the strength of Happy Together and the pre-release of She'd Rather Be With Me. And uh, Lulu, the pop singer, had reviewed She'd Rather Be With Me in a blind date column and said, oh, those are those Happy Together guys. I'm really disappointed. I thought they were going to come out with a good record to follow that up with. This, this is never going to work. And of course, thanks to her, it became the biggest record we ever had in Europe. <laughs> much eclipsed Happy Together's popularity. We went over the first night, and uh, as soon as we checked into the hotel, my message light was on. It was Graham Nash, who we had met uh, on a Holly's tour the previous summer, and he said, come on over, man. Let's have a good time. Okay. So without changing clothes or anything, the entire band hopped into a cab, went over to Graham's flat. And uh, Donovan was there, if it wasn't surreal enough, sitting cross-legged on a rug, smoking a hookah, just as you want him in your dreams to be. <laughs> he was there in all of his mellow yellowness, and, and rolling and smoking, and, every, and, and Graham said, do you want to hear a record? And we said, yeah, because we thought, the new Holly's record, this is going to be great. But instead, he put on what wound up being... Um, Sergeant Pepper. Uh -huh. And we didn't believe it. I mean, our jaws hit the ground. We had never heard anything like it before. And he had gotten his copy from George, and it was on this little reel-to-reel -reel tape, and it was just amazing. And uh, after the thing ended, we all just said, well, we might as well quit. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing left for us. Music has, this is the apex, and it's downhill from here. And he said, well, you feel like having a drink? I mean, let's just celebrate the night. And, okay, so we went to this private club speakeasy uh, where we bumped into nearly everybody. We were brought over to meet the Beatles, all sitting at this one table together, filed by them as much as we had with Bob Dylan, procession style. And by the time they got to Jim Tucker, our sixth member and rhythm guitar player, John Lennon was in no mood for pleasantries. <laughs> He was three sheets to the wind, and he was letting everybody in the club yeah. know it. And he was terribly rude, not particularly to the rest of the band, but to Jim Tucker. He singled this guy out and went, nice haircut. What was that, a beetle cut? Did you ask your barber for a beetle cut? You phony American beetle. And just shattered this guy. And then, then he started ragging on his clothes, and then his glasses, and then his shoes, and then his posture, and then just everything about him. And the guy was just almost in tears. And he finally looked at Lennon and said, I can't believe you, man. I can't believe you. I idolize you. You are my God, man. I, I can't believe I met you, and you, you turned into such a jerk. And Lennon said, you never met me. You never met me. You never will meet me. You don't know anything. You know? And Jim Tucker left, and he got into a cab, and he flew home. And he quit the music business, and he works as an electrician in Sacramento or Grass Valley, California. And uh, hi, Jim. <laughs> um, he doesn't play music anymore. I mean, having John Lennon yeah. say that to you would, I guess, shoot you down. Years later, I wound up working, of course, with John Lennon, and he apologized profusely for that evening, but it wasn't me who needed yeah. the apology. So, you know, Jim Tucker will never know unless he watches this that John says he's sorry from up there. Mm -hmm. But the night doesn't end there, does it? No, it got worse. <laughs> <laughs> and then we uh, bumped into Brian Jones, uh, who was a big fan of anything West Coast, anything with harmonies, mamas and papas, Beach Boys, any, anybody who was singing in harmonies from the West Coast. He had the albums. He was an expert. So he literally stopped me, asked me for my autograph. I just signed the thing and looked up and went, what? You're Brian Jones. Well, I know who I am. <laughs> but Jimmy, I want you to meet this guy. And down the stairs comes this guy I've never seen before in my life with the big fro and the, the red velvet suit. And he introduced himself. And I'm Jimmy from Seattle. I'm living here now. I'm putting a band together. We're going to Monterey in a couple of weeks. OK, cool. Let's have dinner. OK, we went that way to dinner. Brian Jones disappeared with some blonde. I never saw him again that entire night. But Jimmy and I wound up at a table together, and the discussion was not deep at all. It was just cars and chicks and what success felt like and what America was like. He hadn't been back there in a long time, and he was really kind of nervous 
because the English people got what he was doing musically, but he was kind of afraid that Americans wouldn't because they didn't have the exposure to all this psychedelic guitar stuff that was going on in London at the time. And uh, we just kind of shot the shit casually as, as he ordered food for us. It wound up being a spinach omelet. Oh, no, don't ever order a spinach omelet at an all-night private club anywhere. <laughs> but in London, never do it. Never do it because it doesn't mix well with scotch and then cognac. <laughs> And then he started lighting up these ginormous spliffs right at the table. And I was going, Jimmy, what, what, what are you doing? Relax, man. I'm Hendrix. This is London. I rule this town. No one's going to bother us. And they didn't. So we sat there and proceeded to just rise above the crowd, so to speak, <laughs> until I just started getting that little back of the throat <laughs> thing that you get. After a couple of too many of those brandies and stuff. And I said, Jimmy, I, I, where's the Lou, man? And he said, come on, man. Have another hit. You guys are always exaggerating. No, man. I'm telling you, man. Where is it? Oh, sit down, man. And I puked all over it. <laughs> all, of, all over the red velvet suit. And all of a sudden, this gentle man who had been my buddy the entire evening jumped up and started screaming, you son of a bitch! You son of a bitch! What did you do to me? What did you do to me? You puked all over me, you bastard! You puked all over me! Jesus Christ! Jesus. Made a scene. Made a scene. I don't remember the rest of the night. I passed out. I truly, I never found out who took me home. I don't, it wasn't any of the band guys. We did not have transportation. I don't know how I got to my hotel room at all. I do know that I had to cancel the next day's press conferences and concerts and whatever we had to do and just lay there in bed. But Sergeant Pepper came out. So the hotel had a little record player, and he sent one of the other guys out to get Sergeant Pepper, and I lay there in bed just puking into a basket all day and listening to the greatest album of all time. Welcome to London.